The language that uh, the Republican National Committee recently used when they decided not to brand the Democratic Party as the Social Democrat Party, but instead to accuse them of leading the country on the march to socialism is exactly verbatim what Herbert Hoover said about Franklin Roosevelt and the New Deal. That's the revanchist side. Something has been taken away from us. Our country isn't ours anymore. These other people have somehow hijacked it. What do I mean by a movement conservative? I think it's someone who is, another term I use is revanchist, someone who's so convinced that the American society and our government mean to destroy the great values, the traditional values of the nation, that almost nothing inhibits them from trying to take it back. You know, I went to um, a panel discussion oh, a couple of months ago. It was in the spring at Harvard. It was the editors of three very important conservative journals, uh, the Weekly Standard. At Harvard? They went at the to Harvard, Harvard, Harvard Club. Uh, sorry, oh. the Harvard Club in Manhattan. And uh, in Midtown, it was the editor of the Weekly Standard, uh, Bill Crystal, the editor of Commentary, John Podhoritz who is hosting the event, and the online editor of National Review, Jonah Goldberg. He's three very prominent conservative, what we think of, or normally called conservative journalists. And they were addressing what seemed to them the crisis of Obama's election and what conservatives should do to win again and to regain their purchase in American politics. And at one point, I think it was Jonah Goldberg said, we have to take America back. And I thought, well, take it back from whom exactly? From the almost 53% of, of the voters who chose the other guy? Uh, that seemed odd to me. And what also seemed odd, and in fact dismaying, was there was absolutely no acknowledgement that the position we're in today, you know, tremendous economic crisis, the worst most degree since the Great Depression, a war being fought on two fronts and perhaps in some ways being lost on one or the other of them, um, a kind of larger spiritual crisis in the country, tremendous anxieties. There wasn't one of them who said, maybe we should think about the mistakes we made. It reminded me a little of George Bush. It's a sense of of righteousness, of rectitude, of ideological certitude, which doesn't really ever make sense in political terms, because as the great conservative, Edmund Burke, and I kind of begin my book with, said, conservatism is, uh, is a kind of compromise. You are trying to conserve. You want to protect and go safeguard the great institutions of the culture, the habits, of the culture, the government itself is the guarantor of security and harmony. Society and government go together. You can't even take them apart. You can't distinguish one from the other. These are ideas so far removed from what we hear now said on the American right that the only conclusion I could draw is these people aren't really conservatives. Uh -huh. They're radicals. And that's what we've come through, oddly, is a radical phase in American politics. The great conservative period was not the Reagan years, it was actually the late 1960s, I think, when conservatives did become the defenders of what Daniel Patrick Moynihan called the politics of stability. The most important thing we needed was to keep the culture and the society together, and that it was actually the politics of the left that seemed to be threatening that, dis that or sense of order. And that was when great conservatives like William Buckley, who had begun as a, a flamethrower, suddenly emerged as a great Burkean, someone who wants to compromise with the other side. He suddenly realizes it's up to Republicans to defend the great institutions in society, that statism, which had always been the sort of bogeyman of, among conservatives, because they equated the liberal welfare state with communism and socialism, suddenly conservatives like Bill Buckley realized it's up to them to defend the state. And what this meant was they were rethinking 
their basic premises, their first principles. That's what conservatives aren't doing today. A few of them are. Uh, but very few, and I really don't understand it. I don't understand why they call themselves conservatives. Why not just say we're radicals of the right? I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice.